Hey friends, I'm Ranger Rowan, and today I'm going to talk about how to identify aquatic or benthic macroinvertebrates. These are insects and other critters without backbones that live on or underneath water and are visible to the naked eye. Scientists look for them in rivers, lakes, and other bodies of water to determine how clean the water is. Some macroinvertebrates can only live in really clean water, while others can live in any quality water. Many of the bugs you see flying around actually spend their early lives in the water as larvae or nymphs. Depending on the species, they may live in the water for years, but only live on land as adults for a few days. Many insects only eat during their larval stages and spend their adult lives solely looking for a mate. When identifying macroinvertebrates, there are four main places you need to look. First, take a look to see if it has any tails. These are actually false antennae to trick predators so the insect has a better chance of escaping. Next, look at the abdomen. This is the section of body behind the legs. This is often where the insects intake oxygen. The section that the legs are connected to is the thorax. Finally, look at the head to notice whether the eyes are on the top or the sides of the head, how long the antennae are, and whether or not you can see the mouth parts. All of these are helpful for differentiating different insect types. You likely recognize these critters as adults, but not in their younger stage. This is a dragonfly nymph. You can identify it by its short and stout body with two stubby tails. These nymphs are really interesting because of their method of travel. They suck in water through gill-like structures on their abdomen and shoot it out through their rear end. This is called jet propulsion, but we like to call it fart propulsion. While adult dragonflies look very similar to damselflies, their nymphs are very different. Young damselflies are long and thin, with three feathery tails and big eyes on the side of their head. If you've seen small yellow flies around the river, you've probably been noticing stoneflies. These larvae often have hard casings over their thorax that makes them easy to identify. They also have two long tails to match their long antennae. When you see a stonefly larvae on a rock, it might look like it's doing push-ups. This is because some species have gills in their armpits, so they have to move their arms to breathe. There are thousands of sp different species, so both the larvae and the adults come in many different shapes and colors. Adults may be small and yellow with upright wings, or big and brown with wings folded over their back. Mayfly nymphs look very similar to stoneflies with one key distinction. They often have three tails instead of two. This is easy to remember because if you hold up three fingers and flip it upside down, it makes an M. Mayflies have their gills on their abdomen rather than their thorax, so in order to breathe, they wiggle back and forth. The adults have curved bodies with distinct tails and upright wings. Caddisfly larvae are nature's little engineers. They build homes out of sticks, rocks, leaves, and any other material they can find in the river. For example, some species will cut sticks into equal lengths to make little pyramids, or make a little pocket from two leaves. These homes are rarely stationary. The larvae will carry them with them when they travel, like snails. In addition to the protective structures, some species will make silk nets to catch the current and capture food. Adults can be identified by the triangular shape that the wings make. Dobson fly, or Helgramite larva, often live in more hidden environments and are harder to find, but very easy to identify. They have long filaments along their abdomen that are used for breathing, and large, strong pinchers on their head. While the adults lose the ability to bite, the larvae are still very aggressive and may bite. The adults are also easy to identify because of the unique shape their wings make when folded. Crane flies are another one that you probably recognize in adult form, but look very different when young. The larvae look like thick worms with small tentacles around their face. On the other hand, adults have long, skinny legs and small wings, often compared to giant mosquitoes. Water pennies are a type of beetle larva that look exactly like their name describes them. They have hard, round, copper shells. If you look closely, you can see their abdomen and legs through the shell. They lie flat against the rock, so they are easy to miss. Water striders look like large, skinny spiders that seem to float on the water. Like the other insects, they have three pairs of legs. However, each pair has a distinct purpose. The back legs are used to steer, the middle for powering movement, and the front legs are used to catch and consume food. As you might expect, there are also many snails that live in and around the water. These are 
the only macroinvertebrates that have two different groups for different water qualities. You can determine if a snail requires low or high quality water by the way its shell opens. If the opening is on the right, the snail is pollution intolerant and vice versa. Finally, we have a critter known by many names, crayfish, crawfish, and crawdads among others. These freshwater crustaceans look like small lobsters and are easily identifiable by their large claws. They use their legs to walk forward, but when threatened, they will wiggle their abdomen to swim backward. Mayflies, caddisflies, stoneflies, and water pennies are some of the species that are very pollution intolerant and can only live in clean, cold water. On the other hand, craneflies, water striders, and blackfly larvae can live in slow-flowing, poor-quality water. Learn about more macroinvertebrates and take a quiz to test your knowledge on our Facebook at Pisgah River Rangers.